All right, so uh, next topic on N64 MIPS assembly language. Um, memory mapped hardware. So uh, the N64 is, it's a, it's kind of a, a weird place in 30, is it a 32 bit, is it 64 bit? Um, so I'll tell you that very technically, uh, it is, um, the N64 BIOS puts the MIPS processor into 32 bit kernel mode. So what that means is all of the memory addresses and such are 32 bit, which is a total of four gigabyte range, uh, from zero to the four gigabytes. Um, kernel mode is actually what enables 64 bit instructions to be executed. So, um, you still have all of those, uh, all of the, the 32 bit instructions. And in many cases that's enough, but you do have this whole extra set, um, somewhere around a dozen, maybe 15, um, 64 bit, uh, adds, subtracts, multiplies and divides. So, um, it's a four gigabyte range, but the console itself has eight, uh, four to eight megabytes of Ram. Um, the cartridges had anywhere from four up to 64 megabytes. Why do we need, and how do we use four, a four gigabyte address space? Cause that's what it is. It's an address space. Um, so so the first thing is uh from the uh, n64 dev i have the user manual uh open in this tab so again with everything's 32 bit we can ignore the 64 bit portion of this document and we've got all kinds of these address ranges and i was, couldn't think of of the right diagram to to make this so Um, yeah, I can't. So the, the biggest piece, and we kind of see this in, in our, our starter code here, we have our base address, um, that's an eight with seven zeros. And that basically maps to this value here. And there's a poor diagram because address error is not what we have there. Um, Gosh, that's bad. All right. So in addition to the MIPS addresses that we see, we have the N64 specific hardware. And those are here, N64 memory map. Um, all of the this is one of the cool things about the N64 that makes it a great platform for learning, um, especially with assembly language is it's a very flat memory model. And what I mean by that is uh, a lot of times, like if you were to write a, a driver for, I don't know, a SCSI card or a USB card or, or those kinds of things, um, you'll usually have just a couple of registers and then like a, a buffer and you'll have to do everything in and out of this buffer. And so you may need to move say a megabyte file off of a hard drive, but you've only got this 32 kilobyte buffer. So you have to do a whole lot of transactions to get things done. Um, on the N64, it's very flat. So essentially that one megabyte file is one megabyte in the, the address space. So I hope that makes sense. But once again, we're going to be talking about these things and talking through all of these aspects. Um, so this is, this is again, uh, right off, uh, linked off of n64 dev.org and the 
RD RAM is this range here. So this is a little bit confusing. So I'm kind of going to gloss over this and we'll, we'll cover it when it's more relevant. But the RAM is mounted at starting at the 00, zero address. But we'll see that most of what we're doing is actually up in the this uh, eight with seven zeros address and it points to the ram it's a little confusing once again we'll we'll get there um so the ram itself has a couple of different uh configuration options most of these again are handled by the bios but we can read them and in the for the most part it doesn't doesn't really help us but one of the interesting ideas that I've seen from this is a, a random number generator because some of these values are, are constantly changing. So it gives you some, some aspects of randomness in that. Um, so, and so this is a very long document, uh, just to point that out. Um, so this is the overview of, of the different memory ranges. Uh, SP registers, DP registers, DP, DP command registers, DP span, uh, the MIPS interface. Uh, we won't have to know too many of these things. Um, in this video, we're really going to focus on this, the video interface. So I'm going to, once again, go over things rather quickly. We will be covering the audio interface uh, in the future. Uh, peripheral interface uh, is how you access the cartridge. Uh, so like we, uh, we've we heard, you can stream data off of the cartridge and into RAM or directly to video or directly to audio. That's going to be through the peripheral interface. Um, already RAM, again, we're going to ignore that and there's no need to go there ever. <laughs> Um, the serial interface is cool. This is where the controllers are, and we'll be doing some cool stuff with the controllers um, pretty soon. Um, the PIF is the BIOS, essentially, and then the PIF RAM is actually going to work in conjunction with the serial interface. Um, so, again, lots of things in here. But we don't need to know them all so don't get too bogged down in these details um, we'll cover them as they become relevant or if they're even relevant at all so the video interface um, so far we have our code and we know that this writes out to this pif space and this is actually the uh, security this is the uh, digital rights management of the N64. Um, basically, uh, this has to be done or else the N64 just reboots. But we're still not showing anything on the screen. To do that, we're going to have to do some video stuff. So we're going to start to see what this looks like. And I will tell you that a lot of these values are really kind of magic. So I'll be copying a lot. Um, and I will be copying from uh, the Peter Lemon repository. Um, and I'm just looking in the lib folder at his graphics include. And here is the screen NTSC. Uh, I'm NTSC region, but we're using an emulator, so it really doesn't matter. Um, and so we'll just kind of talk through these as we type them in. So. Uh, so again, he, he kind of used the, he used whatever ver uh, registers he wanted at the time. And that is fine. I really prefer to use the T registers when I need to and bring in the S registers, um, as needed. Uh, but for these things, uh, the T's are, are going to suffice. Uh, so first up, we're going to load uh, VI base, which we can find in our N64 include file. Uh, here is the VI base. Um, we can see that it's A440. Um, so 
we'll cross-reference that with this and we see that the video interface is in the 440 range but we've got a zero here and our code clearly says a this is part of that caching um, the a range and again this diagram doesn't show it I, I wish here um, I'm sorry I really wanted a diagram that would that would really show this clearly so we'll see if I can come up with something oh here we go so this is the a range and we can see that it is uncached so from a to bf so from a moving up it's uncached memory and I can tell you that it actually maps to both this a 8000 range and the zero range so what we see in this document is the zero range and so it points to the same place <laughs> I wish there was a better way to explain it but I'm gonna stop talking and we'll do better if we just see it all right so next up we can see that there's an li instruction and oh, yeah that's the status oh i was kind of hoping to avoid that's a much bigger bigger topic um So status is the third parameter, and so here it's BPP16. I'm going to take that back to here. And if you're typing and you're not sure that that code is good, you can look it up here. It was not good. Um, oh, I apologize. I guess I was not as prepared for this lesson as I thought, but doesn't mean it can't be done so uh, raw Oops, not a text document as the extension that it comes down in. There we go. All right, so now still not recognized. There it is. Ah, file not found, N64 graphics. It still picked it up as a text 
document. Once again, one of the one of the things that I did want to show at least a little bit, wasn't expecting it quite like this, but I wanted to show making mistakes so that you could see how to get through them. That was not the kind of mistake I wanted to make. Um, Alright, so we have some basic compiling code and so we're going back here. All right. So um, li is one of those pseudo instructions that I mentioned in the last segment. Um, S W T one to V I status of T zero. All right. So real similar to what we saw here for for writing a value into the PIF memory space. This is where we're starting to write um, our video initialization. Okay. So. LIT1. Um, so I'm going to use kind of an interesting value. So origin is our frame buffer memory. And so I'm going to use a bit of an interesting value here. Three. Um, real quick. Four. The apostrophe is, this is a really cool thing inside of the bass assembler. When you're writing a really long hex value, you can actually put a tick, not a comma, but um, a single quote tick um, to separate your variables, and it doesn't change their values. It just makes it a whole lot easier to read. So I'm going to use that here. And so I'm setting it to the A0, which, as I said, actually points to the 8000. Um, so we'll see how that plays out uh, later on um, so this is the i origin so again so many of these values are magic um, and to be honest these were probably uh, there are a few of them if you like really dig in or if you know the right game that use some of these uh, these video configuration values um, so for example if you wanted to do black boxes at the top and bottom of a screen or even on the sides if you just wanted to shrink your draw space maybe to gain import uh, performance because you don't have to draw quite so many quite as large of a view or quite so many triangles in that space um, if you shrink your draw box uh, within a certain range, you can improve the performance. And so to do that, you do it, uh, you use some of these values. Uh, so I'm getting some comments. Oh, wow, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm gonna address some comments for a moment here. Um, what is the difference between cached and uncached RAM? Uh, excellent question. The cached RAM is, uh, let's see, there's a 16K instruction cache, and this is inside the processor, and then an 8K data cache. Uh, so what happens is the system automatically maintains and keeps those caches full. That's handled for you. Uh, the real difference comes into play uh, when you write data out, uh, because when you write out it writes to the cache and has to be flushed so if you write to the the 8000 range of addresses 
you are writing to the cache first and then you have to flush the cache back to RAM. The um, And so that's really the only time it matters is when you go to write in a certain address range. Now, by writing into the A address range, we actually skip the cache and it does go and write directly to RAM to the same place, but just with that. Um, and, and here, if you look at the addresses, um, so, so here's the A range, address range, and if I, yeah, so the top three bits of the address, those, those have special meaning and define those special ranges. Um, so if I just turn off that one bit, I'm back in the 8,000 range. So by turning on that bit, that means that I'm writing to a different, that same 8,000 range, but I'm bypassing the cache. Um, so, uh, um, Michael here mentions, uh, I think the reads from RAM take around five to six cycles. Um, actually the cool part is, um, that the load word instruction, which we haven't covered yet, but it's nearly identical to the store word. Um, it is a blocking instruction if it needs to, um, if it doesn't already have it in cache, um, it will is still usually only about uh, a two cycle instruction if it's not in the cache and it's a one cycle instruction if it is in the cache uh, so it is really fast um, when you're dealing with all of all of this ram um, and this is one real quick this is one of those differences the playstation one um, has a mips processor and on that mips processor you do have to include an extra delay uh, after a load before you use the value. And on the N64, uh, it's a blocking instruction. So you can just, you can use the value in the next instruction after you've loaded it. So I hope that addressed those questions. I'm so sorry I missed those earlier. Um, all right, so I kind of just did a quick cut, copy paste here. Um, let's let's see here. I'm oh oh okay. Sorry about that. I resized Windows and. It affected more than I thought. Um, okay. So VI status, VI origin, uh, VI width, uh, this is for a vertical interrupt, the current line, and again most of these We'll, we'll see how relevant they may become in, in our design and in some later aspects uh, as we work on work towards a gaming engine. Uh, we may make some of these values a little bit more intuitive to modify. Um, and so, so that's vsync h sync cool um h sync leap so uh it's kind of interesting if you were to really look at and study these values um uh, most of them are related to how an ntsc a uh, signal is broadcast. Um, and how it displays on an old style CRT screen. 
Um, it's kind of cool. I have dug into them, and I, besides uh, the black borders, I haven't seen much value in them. All right. Okay. So um All right. So we, um, so here, I, we'll cover the values that I do know, I'm sorry. Uh, BPP16 is uh, bits per pixel, uh, 16 bits per pixel. So in, on, in the case of the N64, it's uh, RGBA uh, for um, alpha, or the transparency layer, basically. And so it's actually five bits of red, five bits of green, five bits of blue, and one bit of transparency. So kind of an interesting uh, format, and we'll, we'll do cool things with it. Uh, so VI origin uh, points to our frame buffer memory, and we used kind of a cool value there. Um, here is our actual video width. So in this case, we're going to go with the 320 by 240. I'm going to go ahead and note that 320 by 240 by 16 bit. And so the VI interrupt. Um, we will be covering this, uh, the VIV interrupt. Um, it, it's going to come later once we've, we've, uh, done the exception handler piece and this value is zero and here's a really nice cryptic value Okay, so Mag Striper Striker is asking, how does the N64 handle non-standard resolutions? Um, it doesn't. Uh, so, really, there's there's only two resolutions. There's uh, 640 by 480 and 320 by 240. Those are the resolutions. Um, and any any resolutions other than those are set to conform will will operate within one of them so what that means so 320 by 240 if you wanted a 300 by 200 window you would essentially center it in the middle of a 320 by 240 resolution um, and you would then end up with a full black border on all sides um, so you're not going to magically resize and fill the TV screen. Um, that's what the 320 by 240 would do. But you can make your view into the into the game smaller if that's what you want. And the same thing applies to the 640 by 480. You can make it 600 by 400. And again, it's just going to put a black border all the way around uh, whatever you're drawing. And it, it is in these magic values here. Um, that we'll cover later, uh, or very later, <laughs> depending. Like I said, it's not too common. Uh, did Mag Striker, if you have a specific scenario or resolution that you want, um, I can maybe speak to that a little more directly. Um, otherwise, maybe I got your, yeah, I've answered your, your question already. Oops. All right, he's good. And uh, 
ah, higher than 640 by 480. Um, actually, can't do it. Uh, once again, this was N64 was created in a time before HD TV. Uh, the only thing you're gonna, only way you're gonna get higher than that uh, is with the Ultra HDMI kit, and even then, it's only gonna be through stretching. Uh, um, you know, if you go to 1040, or actually, you know what? I haven't even seen it, so I'm not gonna speak to it. Uh, but the N64 itself cannot be configured to push anything higher than 640 by 480. Because that is all TVs could do at the time. Um, didn't know if it would render at the higher resolution then scale it down to 640 by 480. Um, the Ultra HDMI, I'm not sure what it what it's doing. That's the device that would be doing the scaling. Um, I, if you want to see the, that high, the 640 by 480 resolution in a commercial game, um, it's Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine, I think, is is uh, one of the few games that actually uses that that very high resolution. Um, and I've played it, and you know what? It's pretty darn impressive, just the the visuals and what you can see out of it. Um, I do encourage taking a look at that one. So here, uh, it's not a, a nice, easy, he's actually got a formula here. And this is probably a good point to mention. Uh, the bass assembler is, is actually a really capable assembler. Um, because this, this portion is n this math function of uh, 100 uh, dollar sign equals hex i don't think i mentioned that uh so if i take the dollar sign off it thinks that that is a decimal value um, but with the dollar sign it is a hexadecimal value and you can use the 0x version um it that is a personal preference um but what happens here is the assembler so the this function is executed at compile time uh, versus on the console itself. So um, uh, we're doing 320 is our width and our height is 240. So I'm just going to plug those in and I am going to see if that compiles, see how we did. Wow, feels like a lot of code for it to work the first time, um, but we'll give it a go here. Um, so real quick, uh, just to back up a smidge, uh, LI is what's called a pseudo instruction. And so it is a legitimate instruction to write, but what happens is the compiler will make some uh, make some decisions in the background and may change what the compiled output of this instruction is. So uh, it'll be a little, we'll, we're gonna take a look here. Um, so another op item real quick. So we talked about the NOP instruction and it seems like the most boring, like why do, do they have it? Okay, there's this, the, delay slot you use a knob okay but is there any other use for it you know what we're ex in in our on the n64 we're executing our instructions 93 million instructions per second that's a lot of instruction cycles so this is an initialization one time run guess what we can burn some instructions. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a couple of knobs. 
And the reason and why this is good and useful, and I'm going to actually do the same thing down here, is so that when we're in the debugger, our code stands out. We can tell where a block of code starts and ends. Um, if you're going to use this technique, I do recommend using at least two knops uh, because there are going to be many instances where there is just a single, and that's probably the desired result there. Um, but three gives you some really nice borders, and we're going to see what that looks like here in just a moment. All right, so once again, we're going to BP set to our first executable instruction and F5 to let that run. And this is what I was talking about. Those are our three knobs to divide up our code. All right, so um, this is again this is really pretty boring as far as what's going to happen uh, you know executing each instruction but uh just for grins we're gonna open oh let's one two three four we're gonna open that up and then we're gonna do this one um Uh, zero, four, forty, one, two, three, four. Okay, so here, here's a really good tip. Um, this memory range is invalid, and so the uh, MAME displays the asterisks there, um, whereas here we can see that it has zeros, so that there is memory behind that. Um, oops. Okay, and so remember I talked about them being the, so this is the A440 range, and here is the 8440 range, because they're only off by that one bit and so one of these points at the cached version one of them points at the uncached version so um, I'm not sure exactly how MAME implements these things um, but we're gonna watch and see what happens um, so first we're executing our PIF instructions so those are not in the memory range we're looking at here we're just gonna let those go and stepping through um, uh, if you want, you can watch our T0 register here, um, and then our T1 register, we're going to set that value. Oh, so here, I was talking about the pseudo instructions. So here, we typed li and put the value BPP16 into the T1 register. Uh, so LI is a shorthand for load immediate. So that means that my value is part of my instruction and put that into the register. So it's kind of like the load upper immediate, um, but the LI is a pseudo instruction. And so when we look at our compiled code here, um, what happened so here's our first LUI, which we wrote, the VI base to T0. And then the next one is another. Here we have LUI and ORI. And so BPP16 uh, is a constant. And it's equal to the, the number 2. And so what happened is this li instruction actually became two instructions once we compiled. So the, L, the load upper immediate and or immediate. And then our store word instruction is the same. It's, it's that one there. Only it's uh, replaced our constant with 
the value of zero, which is what that constant actually means. Um, and so the pattern picks up here again, and it says LUI ORI. And, oops. So that's our next instruction. So again, the pseudo instruction was just a really nice shorthand for these two instructions that are actually executing. Um, but the thing that I'll point out as well is it really improved the readability of the code um, because the alternative, and I'll write this as commented code, is T1 there. And then, well, yeah, it's basically what we've got here, this ORI. Um, but the thing about this is it's a whole lot more intuitive. So uh, T1, T1, and 0. Um, it's just more intuitive as a programmer to be able to read this value and know that that's the value being assigned there. So uh, on the one hand, it, you know, it increases the instruction count, but you are going to have to write it anyway, and it really makes for easier reading. So um, there are other, I'm sorry, there are other instructions that are going to be like that, and we'll cover them as needed. Um, the other thing, just real quick, I'm going to point out, we did this entire operation with just two registers, and we had 30 to play with. We literally could have set up every single, we could have gone through and loaded all of the values, like, in a string and gone from, you know, the, the first register to the last register, um, but we didn't need to. We only needed these two registers for this entire block of code. So kind of nice and you you'll you'll really appreciate the 30 available registers when we get to to using more and more um so okay so this is our first store instruction so we're writing the value of 2 out to the memory at a440 zero and so we can see that it wrote it into both the 8440 range and the a 440 range and there is our two value and so it continues on um, and again it's the exact same pattern it was a copy paste pattern um, so here's more of our nops to separate the end of our video ref uh, initialization from our while loop basically so now we're into that um, now here I'm going to go back and say remember that I set the frame buffer to point to the very first a address well as we've seen and talked about the this caching of the memory the a address is the uncached version of this address and this address is the first location of instructions in our program. So uh, let's see here. Oh, I didn't want that. Uh, so real quick, I made this mistake. So there's a new memory window and a new disassembly window. So the they are different and, and have lots of different functionality. Um, so just be sure you grab the right one when you're, when you're looking here. Um, so the, the 8,000 range is where the BIOS starts and we see that in our code or actually the header values start there and then our boot code gets inserted into the front of the ROM. So our first executing is actually this 8,000, 1,000 range. Um, but, so, okay. So we set our frame buffer to be that. So it actually is pointing at the first of our, our boot code there, and then it's going to capture the rest of our instructions. The reason to point that out is that is what our 
assembled instructions look like when they're convert when those same bits are converted to a color. Um, so it's really random data blobs, but it's the easiest way to get something on the screen. And that is cool. <laughs> um, I kind of covered a lot of topics here. Um, I hope I went into some good depth. Uh, I'm going to hang out for a few questions if anybody has any. Um, otherwise, I, I, my plan is to get my updated source code uh, updated on the um, GitHub repository tonight and start planning the next videos. So, anyway, I'm available. You're welcome. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the stream. Thanks to everybody.